calling all Spurs fans. Calling all Spurs fans. Let's go, maybe. Let's go. Calling all Spurs fans. Let's go. Let's go. To the Victor Wimbanyama in San Antonio. It's like they knew he was coming. Actually, the Spurs are set up like they've been planning this for years. We always say it matters who drafts you. Unlucky stars like. Bro, guess what? Guess what? We have been planning this for years. Victor Wimbanyama. That's why he traded DeJounte, bro. I don't. I was one of those people that said, yeah, we should have. The DeJounte trade was good. Because, like, bro, right? If you keep DeJounte on your team, this is. This is for all why the Blazers fucking suck, right? If you keep a star on your team and you're barely making the playoffs, or you're, yeah, you're barely making the playoffs or barely out of it, but you're not hard tanking, like, bro, you're just going to be stuck with, like, 10 overall picks, 10 overall picks, 10 overall picks. What the fuck is that? You're just going to be stuck as a mid-team for life. So you either go full-on rebuild or full-on championship, bro. It's either championship or bust, bro. So, yeah, I always agree with the Jante trade. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are like, why, why are you why are you happy about that? Because, like, bro, no, like, if we had the John Taylor team, we're only peaking to, like, the 8th seed, 7th seed if, with him leading. We're finally done with the DeRozan and that power forward era, my nigga. Oh, my God. It's, it's, gonna be, it's a good day to be his first man. Nigga, we get we get the nigga better than LeBron, bro. That ain't gonna be better than LeBron, my nigga. That ain't gonna be better than LeBron, NJ. Yeah, fuck you, Lakers fan. He's gonna, better, he gonna be better than LeBron, NJ, motherfucking Kobe. He is. He's gonna be better than KD. He's gonna be KD with defense, bro. He's really gonna be KD with defense. And he's Kareem's height. Come on, bro. Once he learns that sky hook and gets the tween tween, it's over for you. This league, bro, It's over. We got Victor Wembanyama. Let's go. LeBron James have to waste years on bad teams like the Cavaliers in 03. We can already see the Mavericks yes, might ruin the first seven seasons. Yeah, this this nigga here, Luca. On popular opinion, I think when Luca's career is done, he's gonna be the GOAT. I said it first, I said it now. You can come back to this video in 2023. When Luca's career is over, he's gonna be the GOAT. Simple, bro. Simple. He a modern day Larry Bird, my nigga. Seasons of Luca, but Victor sure. Wimbanyama has a chance to win more rings than Michael Jordan. I know that sounds crazy, but once you hear this plan, it's actually realistic. But I feel bad for teams like the Sixers or the Suns. I mean, yeah, nah, the, yeah, bro, say goodbye, bro. You got, you got Embiid. The process of elimination. The process of elimination. Embiid is gone. Sixers fan, that is a fraud MVP. That is a fraud MVP. My guy, Embiid did not deserve it. Jokic deserve it. He's showing why he deserves it, bro. You going head to head with the Lakers. Meanwhile, Embiid could barely beat the Celtics, bro. When Jason Tatum really shot him out of game six, that was Embiid's chance to strike the beast. And he failed. And he failed. Embiid is a fraud. The Sixers are a fraud. Harden's leaving. You guys are going to be, you guys are going to suck for another five years. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I've been a Spurs fan too. It, it's not too bad. It's not too bad over here. Except for we get Victor Wembanyama and you get that fraud. That's the difference. Let's go. Let's go. I'm talking about Sometimes the number one pick is Markel Fultz or DeAndre. <laughs> Can you imagine winning uh, that draft? Uh, yeah, I know. Another, another thing, DeAndre ain't no fucking fraud. I will always say that. He's a fraud no, number one overall pick. Anyways, back, back, back to it. Congratulations. But the Spurs apparently only win generational MVPs like David Robinson or Tim Duncan. Yes, They're sir. Greatest power forward of all time. Giannis can never. Giannis will never be better than Tim Duncan. Giannis' ass is choking in the playoffs versus the fucking Heat. But the Heat are the Heat should have been the first seed, honestly. And Giannis should have been the eighth. The way shit went, like bro. Yeah, nah, Giannis will never be better than Tim Duncan. Running Dunk Man can only go so far. You can only go so far running in Duncan. He only won that ring because everybody was injured. Giannis is a fraud. He's a fraud. I'm saying it now. I'm jacking it. Yeah, I'm jacking it. Giannis is a fraud. Tim Duncan for MVP. Their worst ever you know season was 1997. 20 wins, Tim Duncan. Second worst season, 21 wins, David Robinson. Now their third worst season, Victor Wimbanyama. Come on. I love being a Spurs fan. We always we go through some time. We went through a rough patch, but... Uh, now we now we got it, bro. We had our generational talent in Kawhi. 
Nigga wanted to keep low managing. We we're like, copy. We, we gonna get, you'll get the nigga better than LeBron. Nigga better than MJ. You gonna get Victor, Wembin, Yava. Fuck you mean. How is that real? Most teams go years with miserable basketball. Like the Kings, who <laughs> missed the playoffs for Oh, yeah, Kings, Kings fans, you actually thought you were going to beat the Warriors. Sad. You guys went out sad. I'm a hated ass nigga. You guys went out sad. I I was rooting for the Warriors the whole time. I knew, I knew Curry was going to go crazy. Come on. Like, Kings fans, like, I'm telling you, this is what I always said about Kings fans. The Kings are nice. They're a nice regular season team like the 2015 Hawks. But then when the real superstars show up, when the real superstars show up, you know what I'm saying, the LeBrons, the Currys, the KDs, when those niggas show up, uh, nah, those fraud-ass, regular-ass season teams, they get exposed, bro. I mean, just look at Giannis. 16 seasons and never got a player close to this. But the Spurs missed the postseason for four years, a franchise record. The NBA city closest to them is Houston, can you imagine how mad Rockets fans are? They're like the. Le oh, you thought you're. You thought you were gonna get one baby Yama and waste his talent like you did James Harden. Oh, isn't that cute? No, no, the NBA did not allow that shit. They're like, we gotta make sure this nigga sells us tickets, so they sent him to the Spurs. Cause the Spurs know how to develop people. You know what I'm saying? Less successful yeah. little. Yeah, you you really thought the Rocket fan, Rockets fans actually thought they were gonna get him with Jalen Green and Kevin Porter. No, just so just so Victor can watch Kevin Porter chuck up twenty shots. No, he going to the Spurs and he gonna take thirty shots a game. The the Rockets actually thought they were gonna get him. Sad, you niggas is sad. Sorry, you Rockets fans, you down terrible. Spurs fans, we up, we up, baby, we up, we up. What the fuck is he talking about? brother who's like of course they won i never get anything the second pick will be made by the oh, oh, imagine being a hornets fan hey, at least you got a little mellow ball at least you got a little mellow ball he gonna sell tickets and shit i feel bad for the blazers imagine dame and wendy oh, <laughs> no i knew it was gonna be the spurs no <laughs> <laughs> but Wimby is so lucky he didn't go to Houston. San Antonio has a plan for their second dynasty. But first, today's video is- Yes, sir. Yo, the Spurs were low-key the Warriors before the Warriors were a thing. Tell me not. Tell me not. Yeah, the Warriors, the Warriors learned from the Spurs, bro. The Warriors are early the Spurs' son. We got more rings. Those two kick, those Mickey Mouse KD rings do not count, bro. We, let's be honest, let's keep it a buck here. So the Warriors really only got like three rings, right? Because Wilt won one. Yeah, because Wilt won one, I'm pretty sure. So, bro, Mickey Mouse ass KD rings, those don't count. Sponsored by So Rare, and I am so going to shout out my So Rare lineup for the conference finals in a minute. But I want to thank all of you who have joined my private NBA So Rare League. It's free to sign up. We have over. Sign up. Can welcome Gordon Robbins. You can hop yeah, into the favorite league and send Kawhi left for Toronto. Yeah, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and like. I gotta do this in the middle of every video. Sub, like. Hold on, I'm blocking it. I, I was blocking it last time. You gotta like, sub, and turn on that motherfucking bell, nigga. Turn on that motherfucking bell. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, go. Oh. It was a horrible moment losing a finals MVP, but if that never happened, they would be trying to build around a broken star like the Clippers, and Wimbanyama would be somewhere else. Then they traded DeJounte Murray. Yes, the bet, the most W move, because we, like, as a, like, I didn't want to be, like, another Damian, another Portland Trailblazers team, and the, the Spurs knew that, too. They got the IQ to realize, okay, we can be an eight seed and keep getting five overall, top five, top ten picks. For like the next foreseeable future, I mean, go for Wendy. I mean, what for Wendy? You know what I'm saying, bro? I can't wait. I can't wait to see the flight reactions where Wendy is just cooking curry. Wendy gonna hit the curry slide on curry, pull up for three, and flight just gonna flight gonna just break his computer, bro. We gonna be up again. We are gonna be up. Let's go. I said so happy, the man. moment that happened, that was a dumb trade for Atlanta. But now it's even worse. The Spurs essentially dealt DeJounte for three unprotected Hawks picks and Victor Wimbanyama. If DeJounte was on the Spurs last year, they would have won more games and not had the number one pick. 
That's it was saying. the perfect. That's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying, bro. He even he he, he understands. He understands. Real real hoopers understand, bro. To trade, but this is a look at all the assets San Antonio has to build around Wimby. All their own first round picks. Those three picks from Atlanta, which includes a pick swap. Three from separate trades with the Hornets, Raptors, and Bulls, plus enough cap space for a max superstar free agent. So what will they do now? Wimbanyama made it perfectly clear last night. Uh, Ace, I, I'm trying to win the ring ASAP, so be ready. Oh, trying to win. Come on. Come on! We win it! The Spurs are on top! We on top! Nigga, niggas coming in. I'm trying to win the wing right away. Fuck is you talking about? Fuck is you talking about? Bro don't have time to develop. He doesn't need to develop. We already got a star, bro. Let's go. Win a ring ASAP, huh? Does that mean the Spurs will trade for Damian Lillard? Maybe Trey Young? No. Their plan is so much bigger than that. Right now, no one on the Spurs can stand in Wimby's way. They just traded away veteran center Jakob Pertl, and yeah. there's no young center he's gonna fight for minutes with like a James Wiseman. They have Keldon Johnson, who averaged 26 points a game after Christmas, had seven 30-point games last year. Jeremy Sohan yeah, is a so perfect hard. role player who's a wing. Bro, we got Devin Vassell. That can impact things you know what I'm saying? Ball. Devin Vassell, yes, sir, a the great sniper. shooter. Malachi Branham showed flashes. Yes, sir. I think Wimby's rookie year will be all about pumping up those other guys for a future trade. Wimby could immediately make them a play-in team because of his defense. He was actually known as a defensive player until recently. He became a big prospect in the 2019 Euros when he averaged just nine points, but five blocks a game. Then in 2021, he won the French League block title and led Euro League in blocks at 18 years old. But in 2022, everything changed. That's when he got the bag. That's when he got the KD bag. Has he has he tween? Wimby went from the number one pick to the best prospect since LeBron by going to another team to develop offense. He became a better scorer Look on that. Nets with pull-up. Who the fuck is blocking that? Yeah, I, I am I am pushing the Wemby narrative. This thing is going to be the best. He going to be better than... He might be the GOAT. Nah, we already... We drafted the GOAT, bro. We drafted the GOAT. Shots and moves the in the post. Let's be He's honest. also a shot creator. Has an insanely <laughs> tight handle that. for a guy who's seven foot four in shoes. But when he played against the G League Ignite, Wemby loved the spotlight against Scoot Henderson. 37 points in game one. 36 points in game two. The high... Who's stopping him? He's seven fucking four. He's built like Kareem. He plays like KD. How the fuck are you gonna guard him? He's him. Highlights are Victor insane, Wendy. but they also cover up his flaws. Another reason the Spurs are going to wait on this plan is Wimby's got some work to do. At just 230 pounds, he does get pushed around by bigger players. Okay, so what? Jokic can Jokic is only gonna drop twenty, bro. Yo, Jokic is yo, he's gonna lock up Jokic. He could like he could literally lock up Prime Shack, bro. Stop it, bro. Like stop In it. France. This is one clip. This is one clip, bro. Everybody has one embarrassing clip. Like when we can literally lock up Prime Shack, I'm saying I'm jacking it, bro. That he's him. It's bro. a big step up in the NBA. He's him. His passes get picked off right now way too much because other players can see what he's about to do. And the highlights make it look Maybe. like he's a Kevin Durant level shooter. He's more like young. Honest. Don't compare he him to that nigga. Don't compare him to that fucking choker. He Come hit on, bro. about 32. Nah, nah, nah. AM hoops. That's low key disrespectful to carry. You can't compare him to Giannis. Come on. Come on, bro. You could have just compared him to like, nah, it's just not Giannis. Percent of his jump shots, not much better off catch and shoot threes, and twenty percent okay. off the dribble threes. Okay, so what, bro? You gonna you gonna you gonna develop it, bro? He's he with the fucking San Antonio, bro. Stop it. That is not good. Stop it. I'm not saying, of course, he's going to be a bad player, but there's room for improvement. But the good news is Wimby's got great mechanics to. LeBron couldn't shoot. He still put up fucking 30 in his first, in his second fucking season. Zion can't shoot and he can fucking put up 20, 25 a game. It don't matter. You don't need a jumper. You don't need a jumper. 
Stop. Hold on. And on his last All he needs is that fucking sky hook. Once he learns the sky hook, bro, that he's literally gonna be unguardable, bro. He was allowed to be taking these bad shots, which led to more misses. But the Spurs are the perfect team to develop him, which will happen. That is why the first year is not for a big trade. But when Wimby's ready, it will happen. A recent anonymous NBA poll asked players, which coach other than your own would you like to play for? Greg Popovich won in a landslide. Yeah, these are really, the, let's be honest, these are the top three coaches. Steve Kerr and Eric Spolstra, and the Greg Popovich number one, of course, because he plays for San Antonio. Ty, Tyron Lou is low-key an underrated coach, I feel like. He brought the Clippers. The Clippers would have won the championship, literally. He was coaching. Like, bro, if Kawhi did not tear his ACL, they really would have won the championship. Underrated-ass coach. He was playing good against the Suns. Eric Spolstra, he does. Like, look. Look at the fucking Heat Ross. There's a Jimmy Bam and a bunch of G League players. Yeah, there are. Yeah, they fucking already took game one from the Celtics. Like, come on, bro. Eric Spolstra is him. He knows how to coach. He outcoached Louis the Bucks coach. That coach is ass. You know what I'm saying? Steve Kerr, of course, Dynasty, Warriors, and Greg Popovich. The Warriors before the Warriors were a thing. I'm jacking that. I'm dead jacking that. I do not care. Let's go. Which is crazy because the Spurs hadn't been to the playoffs in years. I mean, it made sense for them to say pop when the team was competing for titles. Players are like, yeah, I want to go there and win a ring. But this is about more than that. Players love pop. But now, the free agent pitch is a lot more attractive with Wimbanyama. I think the dream target could be Luka Doncic. He will be in a position to demand a We're literally, yo, we have, if we have Luka and Wendy on our team, bro, seven rings, seven rings, seven rings. I don't give a fuck. No one in the league is gonna stop us. Who's gonna stop us? LeBron's old ass. He out the league. Curry, Curry couldn't even beat fucking LeBron, bro. I'm sorry. His teammates are not going to show up. They're not going to show up, bro. They're not going to show up. Clay, Clay Thompson gained gain 6%. <laughs> Clay Thompson. That's what niggas... That's a new name. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, we, we, we're really going to be the next... We're going to be better than every fucking franchise, bro. We're really going to take the, the fucking ring record, bro. We're going to win 11 finals like Bill Russell, bro. Simple, Trade bro. two years from now which is perfect time for Wimby to grow. You may think the Mavs would never do a deal with San Antonio. They might not have a choice. He could demand to go there like AD did with the Lakers. I mean, New Orleans hated the idea of AD being in LA, but eventually they had to do the trade. Luka and Wimby would be a perfect fit on the court. Wimby's defense helps with Luka's bad habits, and Wimba and Yama could still be on a cheap contract, allowing them to have depth. But that 2025 offseason is insane for free agents. Look at the superstar names. Bro, someone's gonna join Wimba and Yama. We got one of these niggas, yo, Jimmy, Jimmy. Luca, Wendy, Yam, yo, we can't literally, bro. Just, just hand the ring. Just hand us the championship ring at that point, bro. Um, could you imagine? Like, I'm sorry, who the fuck want? We, we don't need this nigga. This nigga gonna choke. This nigga's all right. We don't need this nigga. Just give us Kawhi. Give us Kawhi back. Yo, yo, what Kawhi and Wemby? Yo, the two way dominance will be crazy, bro. Just imagine this nigga. You don't know if he gonna put up fifty or five. Uh, Jamal, he always turns up in the playoffs. I've never seen Ingram in the playoffs. Donovan Mitchell, he, like, this, this nigga choked this year. We don't need no pandemic piece. So yeah, you give us either Kawhi or Jimmy, bro. They show up in the playoffs, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Available that summer. Could you imagine? The Spurs could go for any one or two of these guys. But do not believe the people who say, oh, that's not how the Spurs do things. They don't make big trades. Uh, that's wrong. They are not going to use all these picks they have for themselves. They know how lucky you have to get in the draft. That would be a path to losing for years and winning if you got lucky. No, the Spurs will get a big free agent or trade if it's the right timing and the right price. The one thing that could derail all of this is injuries. But Wimby doesn't have a history of foot or knee issues like other big men. The Spurs give him the best chance. Yeah, bro, he's about to play fucking 72 games this fucking season, bro. Let's go. He going rookie of the year. Just, to just, live hand, up. just hand him the MVP trophy. We're giving it to niggas like Embiid. No, let's talk about Embiid, by the way. 
big fraud. A big fucking fraud. If we're giving the MVP to niggas like MB, you might as well just give the, the MVP to Wemby at this point, bro. I'm not gonna lie, bro. To the hype, because they- This nigga, Wemby is already better than Joel Embiid. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Yeah, I said it. Sixers fans, you niggas is down terrible. Down terrible. You guys had a chance. Jason Tatum was really playing. <laughs> Yeah, Jason Tatum's really playing like a fucking G League player. You guys had a chance to stab the Celtics in the heart, just take the series, and you niggas didn't. You niggas didn't, so you down terrible. And Pete is a fake MVP, the first ever fake MVP, only MVP to never make the conference finals. Down terrible. Have a great culture. Wemby is better. I said it. I said it. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I'm just so happy to be a Spurs fan after all this fucking losing, bro. Oh my and god. And all the right assets oh to god. build. I really hope this works out because the expectations are ridiculous. I mean, at this point, it's like, oh no pressure, Wimby. Either be the best player since LeBron or you're a complete failure. But he does seem ready for it because just like David Robinson and Tim Duncan before him, Wimby sounds mature and professional. We see how bad immaturity can hurt a player like with John Mar ja Wick hitting the gritty and shit. They get hit in the gritty. Hitting the gritty with the Glocks. Gritty with the Glocks. You know what I'm saying? We, got, we actually got a level headed star. Fuck yeah, you grizzly fans. You down terrible. Look at the. Your roster is full of gangsters, on the <laughs> Your roster is full of hood ass niggas, bro. Right, nah, I come to San Antonio. John needs to come to San Antonio. Morant, but Wimby just feels like the next Spurs dynasty. But speaking of Ja, we just heard from the commissioner, Adam Silver. He said the suspension for Ja will be serious. So what is next for Ja Morant? Check it out. Eh, fuck Ja. We got Wimby, you know what I'm saying, W, W. You know what I'm saying, big W's. When they yap to the Spurs, you know what I'm saying? Make sure to like, like, sub, share. The Spurs are on top, baby. They be on top again. Let's go. Let's go. Bye, catch y'all. Peace.